Hello and welcome to this recap of today's open source live code hangout. Today we've been working on the Western Friend website on a couple of issues. Go ahead and review these issues and the code involved in uh, resolving them. The first one is uh, we recently upgraded Wagtail and Django to their uh, 4.x uh, series. These are new releases from both projects. Wagtail, I think, is mirroring the Django release in that sense. And after upgrading, we uh, there were several deprecation warnings in the uh, terminal saying that in Django 5 or Wagtail 5, uh, we're removing these features. So here's some time you have to uh, resolve them. They looked like that. Not very entertaining. But what we did today is just kind of go through each of these and, and uh, figure out what it was needed to fix it. They're pretty straightforward. Take a quick look at the code here. Um, most of these are just the same thing over and over, so I'll try to skip over the things that are the same. Um, basically, we altered a bunch of fields, and in, or, uh, in order to do those alterations in the database, we needed to generate some migrations. So all these uh, migrations are relating to a wagtail field uh, type data type called stream uh, field, which is essentially a JSON field that lets you store uh, semi-structured content. Um, these can be various types of blocks, and you can assemble a page with these blocks, like headers and uh, headings and target, uh, like with uh, various attributes like a target. And so this migration is basically altering this um, stream field to add some um, behaviors. We'll look at the actual field definition. Typically, we don't have to worry about the migration code that's automatically generated. So we basically went through all of our models. And in the case where we had a stream field, we have to explicitly tell it whether or not to store the stream field data as JSON. Um, previously, it was storing it as kind of a text, a big text blob that would get um, uh, deserialized or somehow parsed into Python list. And now uh, the JSON um, gives uh, the ability to have some improved uh, ergonomics when you're querying within a stream field. So I opted in to use the JSON representation. However, on the local development, we're using SQLite, which doesn't have this JSON field. But fortunately, Django gives us the abstraction or wagtail somewhere in there that it just worked. Um, so I'm glad for that. Didn't have to uh, start up a Postgres container in my local development environment. And uh, the other big change, these are just going to be repeated, is Wagtail is auto-generating editing forms. It's a content management system. You define your content types. Typically, they are defined as Wagtail pages. Pages are a hierarchical data model where you have a root page, and that page can have children, and those children can have children. Although you can also define Django content types, which are just any arbitrary database table and fields. And Wagtail handles the magic of generating an editing interface a con that the content managers can use. Uh, it looks something like this, where you have fields and those fields have representations. We'll get into this particular content type in just a moment. But in any case, for some of these more complicated fields, prior to Wagtail 4, you, there were some specific field types uh, such as the stream field um, type because of the nature of stream field being in like a nested list of, of JSON essentially now. Uh, they wanted special handling, but Wagtail 4 now has rolled these features into the regular field panel, which means our code base is simpler, developer experience is simpler. Everything is basically a field. Wagtail figures out uh, how that field should be rendered without really the developer having to think much about that. So that's a nice improvement. So this is one model that we made those changes to. Django uh, 5 will be deprecating this. Uh, use L10N or, or localization um, setting. And Django 4 is defaulting this value to true. So since the default is currently true, meaning that Django will automatically localize any content that's rendered into the template, um, we can just remove this setting and set ourselves up for 
Django 5, which is, uh, I don't know when that'll be released, but in any case, we're ready for it, at least at this stage of uh, deprecation. And the other wagtail um, sort of notification or not uh, in our terminal was that we needed to define this variable, uh, which is basically where you access the wagtail uh, admin screen. It's a bit bright there. I'll just do it half, half size. So we did that, and that will help for some other features, such as uh, email notifications. Great, that was done. Again, that's a migration. I'm going to go try to go through these a little bit fast. Uh, this is just switching stream field to field panel, cleaning up imports, switching stream field to field panel. That was good. Another migration. Kind of, kind of skim through these. Setting the JSON field and switching the uh, stream field to field panel. Migration. I should have minimized the migrations before we did the review. Uh, this is our formatting changes from our code formatter, migration, image chooser. So this is another example of a complex block type for multimedia handling that typically need, or that historically needed its own class and block. Now that's been rolled into the field panel. So the field panel is getting more robust. We also have a stream field here, so we're making the same changes. Relating to that, this is one of our more complicated models in the magazine section of the website. And this code, as you can see, is all open on GitHub. We are an online magazine publication and community platform So, if you, uh, with e-commerce and a bookstore. So if you have any of those type of features and soliciting donations, uh, feel free to uh, check out our code and see if it suits your needs. Let's skip through these, stream field, field panel. Uh, then I did run an update on all our dependencies just because we're still in um, sort of a really beta mode. So I'm just keeping everything up to date. I think that's it. So great. Uh, you know, a thousand lines changed mainly because of the poetry lock. There were several updates that ran. but got rid of all of the deprecation warnings from Wagtail and a couple that were in Django that I didn't originally capture in the related issue. So since this didn't need any kind of peer review uh, so much, I'm this I'm the only developer here. I just went ahead and merged this one. Now let's take a look at this latest feature. I'm going to do this so it's not quite so blazingly bright. The website, as I mentioned, has several features. Uh, it's a community portal, and one of the features is to display events, uh, community events like meetings or celebrations. Um, and not quite a calendar, but it's sort of like an events list. And uh, those events have some attributes. An event title, which is everything in Wagtail, as I mentioned, is a page. And whether or not that event is featured, and I'll just show you what we ended up with. Um, we previously had to manually specify on the home page which events to feature. There's a little section there, and you could display up to like three events. But now, Editor, so the editor would in that case create an event, then visit the home page, then edit the home page, then remove an event that was featured if there were already full, like three previously selected events, and then add a new one. So there's a bit of manual process there. Now the only step that's needed is the check a box. So it's still a little bit manual. Uh, that means that the editor can choose which ones should be featured, and they will automatically appear on the home page. So we'll look at the implementation here. In a moment, I'll just mention this is a plain text field. It, Wagtail chooses the right um, widget here. This is a stream field. It's a composite of multiple uh, potentially complex uh, fields, including multimedia. I mean, it's it's pretty powerful with like modal choosers and upload. It's very nice. All of this is just done with Wagtail. I define like one line of code, more or less, in the stream field body. Uh, we get date choosers with, I mean, it's just such a great um, content manager. I, I can't recommend it more. It really, if you're starting out a new uh, project that has a need for a content management system, uh, check out Wagtail. You know, compare it with the established WordPress and other content management systems. But I believe not only is the user experience, in it's exceeding, I believe, even WordPress now. Uh, and the developer experience is top-notch, especially being built on Django. 
So let's just take a quick look at the home page as I've created several events, as you can see here in the events listing, created three events, one in the past. Today is October 5th, 2022. One in the future and one in the future ish. It's not so far away, but still. So I can say, um, you can see the Wagtail actually admin interface also generates all of this. I just tell it what content to render and then how, you know, which fields to generate filters on. Uh, all of this is done by Wagtail. Really cool. But I don't want to go too far into the details of Wagtail during this live stream summary. So when we go to, and this is the admin homepage from earlier, when we go to the front page, now we see the Front page looks like this. I can edit the title and add some rich text. And you can see it's really taking notes from the Gutenberg text editor, WordPress Gutenberg. Uh, you can add rich multimedia, upload things, all within uh, this uh, block based editing interface. When I view the live home page, you'll notice there are no events here. It's just a welcome and an intro. So the page title and the intro text. When I view it live, we have the page title and the intro text. And a current issue, which is not really doing it justice, this will have a, an uh, issue cover photo and some other information. But below that is the featured events section that's displaying a number of featured events. Notice that these are in the future, and they were both, when I added them, I toggled that featured event um, checkbox. Let's quickly look at the code for this. It's pretty straightforward, though. So after some discussion, we decided to make the featured events more user friendly from the editor, the content management perspective, by sort of automating most of the wiring to the front page and just adding a checkbox. So it didn't take many lines of code, about 20 minutes of coding, I think. Uh, so again, we've got a migration here where I've altered um, the, I've added a field to the event model. And that looks like this. Here's the model for the event. I've added this is featured field, which is a Boolean, it defaults to false. So it's true or false with a default value. That means you have to opt in to the um, events being featured. Added a little bit of help text here. I believe that help text is on the events. Add event. It's, yeah, going to just give you an indication what this means. And we're using our famous field panel. To, and it just knows that it's a Boolean field, so it needs to render a checkbox. Well, that's handled by Wagtail for us. Uh, then we migrated the home page model, which is a instance in a row in a table in our database. This was a little bit more uh, complex of a change, but basically we got to remove a bunch of um, things that were no longer needed. First thing, I had this join table where anytime you have a many-to-many -many relationship in a relational database system, You'll typically define those relationships by adding a, an intermediary table that takes uh, the ID of each of the related entities and stores them to make that connection, as opposed to just having a foreign key field on, on one entity or the other, uh, which would be like a one to one or many to one. Um, and in the case, uh, homepage featured event used to be an orderable where when you're editing the homepage, you would be able to manually select those events and then change the order of them. It's a pretty nice feature of Wagtail when you need it. We, uh, we are using it elsewhere in the project, but we no longer needed it here. So I removed that table. And um, an inline panel means that you can tell Wagtail when you're editing a particular entity or page in, in this case to, a lot, to display related entities as if they were kind of part of this entity. So when we're editing a home page, you would see in line uh, this featured events orderable, which could be up to a, um, I think just any arbitrary number of events. We didn't have a limit, it looks like. Um, so it's like a chooser, you add zero or more. We removed that though, because we're making the user uh, editing experience simpler. And the import here, I had imported the uh, date time and the event model. Apparently the page model, I'm not sure why. But um, so this is going into the Django territory. When you're um, 
wagtail pages are essentially Django um, content. So in the, and this is actually pretty scattered. In the homepage model, we have this get context function that gets called when the home page is rendering. What that does is prepares data to be rendered into the template. And we'll get the default context from the, based on the request and the super class, which is the page model. And we're going to add a couple of variables to that. Previously, we had this variable here to add the current issue, which just grabs the um, one of the magazine issues that's been published, uh, most recently published, grabs the first one of those. For the featured events, we basically did a very similar thing. Event objects, I should probably make sure that they've been published. The editor may want to draft them. I just realized that. That's what this live does. It makes sure that it is, it is published. Wagtail adds this publication workflow that isn't bail, um, built into Django by default. So I'll probably change this to objects live. And I'll want to filter those that this, to where the start date is greater than or equal to now, basically there, today or later. Uh, and order those by the start date. I think that probably is the default. They're probably already um, automatically ordered by that. So this is probably unnecessary. And then select only three of those. And return the context so that it can be rendered into the template. And all we do in the template basically is had to do a little bit of rewiring. The featured events was previously a member or property of the page the home page, but now I've moved it into the template context. So it's it can be referenced just by name here, sort of. And if that um, if there are some featured events, if that query returns some results, we're going to render those uh, in a section, featured events section. And we're going to loop over each one of those and, and display it in a card. Um, so that's more or less it. I didn't actually write this during this session today, but it displays the event title, start date, formatted way, and the time zone, and the teaser texts, so that there can be a, a brief um, description if that's available to give more in information, but not display the full uh, event description. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, this feature is, uh, this pull request is still marked as draft, even in this review, I've noticed at least one change that I would like to make, and I'm going to get some feedback from the editor, the magazine editor, Mary Klein, to see what her thoughts are. One improvement that comes to mind is that um, we might want this number to be configurable up to five, say. You can display up to three or five. Um, so that would be a, a feature or a property I could add on the home page. And again, I probably only want to display uh, live events just to make sure uh, that the editor can draft future events uh, and you know take advantage of the wagtail publication flow all right well this has been another uh, open source live code hangout if you'd like to get involved with this project you can stop by github.com slash western friend or stay tuned on our stream here and i'm also working with a couple of other open source projects one of which is CiviWiki, and we are trying to line up a bunch of good first issues uh, for new contributors to take as part of the Hacktoberfest initiative, where you can win or get some kind of rewards for contributing to open source projects. All right, thanks a lot for your time, and I hope you're doing well.